This is Wisconsin Tonight. Here's Carol Meekins and Mike Jacobs. And thank you for joining us for Wisconsin Tonight. Milwaukee Mayor Tom Barrett delivered his State of the City address today. He is going to join us live here in the studio in just a minute, about 10 feet away off stage <laughs> here. But first, let's take a look at some of the highlights today. The mayor laid out his vision for 2013. He praised local leaders for bringing growth to Milwaukee, but he also took aim at the state legislature for threatening to end residency rules for public employees. And other highlights from the speech included the streetcar project. The mayor says the route is being finalized in the final stage of the engineering phase also talked about investing in neighborhoods there are full of vacant homes but that's where a lot of the city's crime takes place in those homes and also he addressed a public vetting on whether to build a new arena to keep the milwaukee bucks right here in milwaukee mayor barrett thanks for being with us tonight it's great to be on your new show thank yes. you why do you think uh, city employees should be forced to live in the city well i don't think anybody should be forced to live anywhere mike i think what we have now and we've had for 75 years is a process where when people apply for a job we let them know that a condition of employment is that they get to reside in the city of milwaukee. well that sounds like yeah. forced yeah. the <laughs> critics would say it's forced. But, but again in all seriousness if someone doesn't want to live in the city that's fine and i'll use the fire department as an example last time we had an open application process we had 5700 people who wanted this job 5700 so my view is if, if someone doesn't want to live in the city, that's fine. They can move because I know I've got 5,700 people who want their job. Then don't apply for the job. Then right? don't apply for the job. But there's something more fundamental here. What does this have to do with the state budget? Why would the governor slip this into the state budget? There's now, absolutely nothing with state finances in this. And there are a lot of critics who, who, who are saying, well, could this possibly be a political vendetta after the former election? Well, and I would certainly hope not. I, clearly, what what is at play here, at least in part, is that the Milwaukee Police Association and the Milwaukee Firefighters mm -hmm. both supported him in the past election. I, I don't think we should maybe be making policy according to who followed who in an election. But, but again, it does not belong in the budget. It is clearly an issue of local control. And, and we don't have a problem. We don't have a problem. Last year in our fire department, 850 firefighters, two of them voluntarily resigned. Two. There's more that resigned here at Channel Ford last year, I bet. <laughs> and so, so there's not a problem. We can attract good people. We can, we can keep them. And, and I don't hear anybody complaining about the quality of Milwaukee's firefighters. Nobody complains about the uh, men and women who work for the city. No. Let's move on to our next topic because we've got a couple of other topics we want to talk about a little bit. And one of them uh, is is uh, the the uh, streetcar project. Well, let's talk about the streetcar project. Critics say that there's not a need for it, that it's going to be too expensive, uh, that you've got 50 plus million dollars from the federal government that's burning a hole in your pocket and you just want to spend it on something. Well, the money has been there and, and it is true that, that the federal dollars are the ones that are the major source of funding here. And that money's in the bank, $54 million. And I've been very careful to make sure that we don't extend the route beyond the financing we have. But if you look at a lot of cities around this country, cities like Cincinnati or Atlanta or Kansas City, they, they're, doing, they're doing streetcar projects because they see cities like Seattle, Portland that are growing that have added rail as part of their their transportation arsenal and and if you think about it try to think about a major American city that's growing that doesn't have some sort of rail as part of their transportation that's what we want to do we want to grow downtown and one of the other things I said this morning is if you look at the downtown area the third ward the fifth ward we've got 20,000 people living downtown in the in the area surrounding there right now uh, and we think that's going to grow people are excited about living in Milwaukee and we think that's a really good thing and one of the concerns, though, from people, critics especially, is the cost and whether it will be used enough. That's what they keep saying, you know. Is there that viable for a city like ours, especially with our weather? Well, and what I've heard in other communities, and again, I'll, I'll use Portland as an example, is that what you will hear initially is that this is the end of Western civilization as we know it. But once, once it's in and once it's running, then the debate changes to how can we get this extended? How can we get it extended to UWM? How can we get it extended to the airport? How can we get it extended to Miller Park? So, so the dynamic changes once it's there because people ride them. Finally, let's talk about the Bradley Center. Do you really think that outlying areas are going to pump money in this tight economy, tight taxes, that they're going to pump money into a project that's in the city of Milwaukee? Well, that's a conversation that I wanted to start today because I think that we should have an honest, transparent, open discussion about the bucks. I, I believe that the bucks should stay here for decades to come. 
They belong in Milwaukee. They belong in Wisconsin. And they are a great asset for the city, for the region, and for the state. But just like Miller Park, just like State Fair Park, they're, they're a state asset. The Bradley Center right now is a state facility. And so my belief is that we have to have this conversation. And, and I didn't stake my ground into any one particular financing mechanism because I think we have to have that conversation. But I wanted to make it clear that, that I believe when I go to the Bucks games, I go with my buddy from Pewaukee or I go with my pal from Mequon. Those are the guys I go to the games with. And, and so I think it makes sense for us to look at this as a regional asset. And, and whatever we do, we do together as a region. Well, right. that's what a lot of people would like to see happen, but we don't know if <laughs> most but people we'll see what happens. might that's say it'll be too myopic. We yeah. know you have to run, yeah. Mayor Bear, but we appreciate you being with us this evening. All right, thank you both Thanks very much. Thank you, sir.